All right. Um, once you have picked out your character, which I'm going to give you guys like five or so minutes to, to pick out your character and get logged in and all of that. Once you've picked out your character, your country of origin is right here. This is going to be important. You need to know what country you're from and what language you speak. You're going to have an occupation. How many children do you have? The more children you have, the more interesting life gets. Um, when did you arrive? And the ship that you arrived on isn't necessarily as important. I'm going to go down and find Mary really fast because that's who I've chosen. Oh, look, there she is. Oh, that's pretty close too. All right, so Mary O'Sullivan, that's me, she is 28. I'm a female. I'm from Ireland and I speak Irish, uh, which is like Gaelic. Uh, I am a homemaker and I have five children. I come over in 1860 um, and I'm on the Edinburgh from Queenstown, Ireland. So my family lived on a small farm in Ireland. In recent years, a disease has struck Ireland and has killed much of my potato crop. Your family has lost their home about five years ago and I've been living with my husband's family in a one room apartment with all of my children. Um, you had six children, but lost the youngest son due to hunger. Remaining children are sick. You convince your husband to leave Ireland for America. So me and my five kids and my husband are fleeing from Ireland because of famine. All right. So make sure that you remember those things. All right. Not, not about me, but about yourself. I did have six kids. I'm uh, coming over with five. Me, Mary. Five. All right, so who are you? You are Giovanni, is that what that says? Tell us about yourself, Giovanni. Uh, well, I'm a wood, 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 I'm a Nicholas Blanc said that he would pay your way to America if you would make it work for him for five years. Very cool. All right. So you're coming over with a job, right? Very good. You are, did you say Isabella? Mm -hmm. You are Isabella. Tell us a little bit about yourself, Isabella. Um, I'm 22 years old, you know, I'm from Spain. I hope that I do. Or children. Um, me and him are hotel in Spain. We're well known. For your beautiful room and delicious meals. In recent years, travel has decreased. People are afraid to travel because Spain is at war with Morocco. And then your husband decided to stay in Very cool. So you're a hotel manager and you have a whole bunch of children, right? Welcome to the club. Does it say William? Yes. Oh, wow. I can't believe I could read that far away. Are you William Murphy? Tell us a little bit about you, William. Hey, we were passengers together. I own a few acres of farmland in Ireland. Although I've never been rich, I love playing bees and watching them grow. They can be as effective as the bees. I enjoy all my crops, potato crops, and bacon, and dairy crops too. As they fall apart, they black and white from their hands. And my family has survived for as long as I can. Okay, cool. All right. So you're coming over because of the famine as well, right? All right. We'll see what happens with you. It starts with an E, doesn't it? Is it Elmer? Ooh, I don't see. Ooh, Einar Ackerson. Einar sounds good. It's Swedish. All right. Tell us a little bit about you, Einar. Uh, 
guys, you are coming over to take opportunity with farming, hopefully. But you have four kids? Okay, we got a lot of children coming over. Soren, tell us a little about, about yourself. Um, I'm 24, I'm a male, I came from Romania, I came from Romania. Um, my job uh, is my mother, I have one kid, I arrived in the year 1999. Um, I work in the barber shop in the heart of my hometown. Um, the barber shop has been in my family for many generations, and um, people have been speaking out against um, my government and people are taking more land and also taking money. And with that, um, it's unsafe where I live now, so I'll be taking to America. Very good. So you're coming for religious freedom too, right? Um, religious slash political freedom? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Very cool. You have a very small handwriting. Does it say David? Uh, Okay, tell us about yourself, David. What's your last name? Uh, I don't know how to pronounce it. Oh, <laughs> oh no, I don't know how to pronounce it either. Something Bowski. Chris Bowski? Oh, no, I didn't All right, go for it. Tell us about yourself, David. Uh, I'm 37. I'm a male. I came from Ukraine. I came to get it. My occupation is uh, a doctor. Uh, and Seven children. Um, I arrived at 1891. And do you want me to read uh, the name of the shit? No, you have to read the name uh, of the shit. Says, I am the only doctor in the village. My father taught me how to get involved in lower fever. I remember every baby in my room for the past 10 years. I have created a special population to help children. In recent years, people from neighboring towns have been poor to me. I'm worried that I am a target for an attack because so many fellow humans rely on, on me to stay healthy. I decided it is best to be my way. Very cool. Very cool. So you are coming over for religious freedom as well. Sort of, kind of. Ever so slightly. And you're a doctor have a lot of kids. We're going to have our own village of children. Any, any more, tell us about who you are. Uh, I'm 15. I'm, uh, I'm from Ireland. I'm from Ireland. Uh, my occupation is a teacher. I don't have a degree. I got to America in 1992. Um, my parents left Ireland to head for America a few years ago. I've been living with my aunt, my uncle, and my younger brother. My parents have finally earned enough money to pay for me and my brother to join in America. I spent my last night in Ireland with my family and friends. I will be responsible for my younger brother on my journey to America. Very cool. You are a very responsible 15 year old. And then, very last, Adam. Um, I don't know how to say your last name, but you're from Czechoslovakia. Tell us about yourself, Adam. Um, I'm 22. I'm a textile manufacturer, and I'm Jewish in my family. And we lived in America because people were treating us unfairly, and it's very late to family in America. Yeah. How many kids kids do you have? Two. Two. Oh, you just have two kids. Well, all right. Okay, so what you will do from this point, and we're not going to walk through this bit, um, every single bit together. You have this graphic organizer right here, which I will pop up really fast. Well, not really fast because my internet is slow. Okay, So this is your this is your organizer, okay? You do need to do this, all right? You do not turn this in, all right? But you need this information. Does that make sense? So you're doing this so that you can do the assignment later on, all right? So you put your reason for living, your family information, a few good things about yourself, and the bad things about yourself. 
Then you will go to where it's the PDF that says inspection and it will tell you what your experiences during processing are. It'll tell you about your belongings that you're bringing with you and you can make predictions about what you think is going to happen to yourself. You're gonna come down here to living in a new world. What's happened to you that is good? What has happened to you that is bad? And then you're gonna check out the American dream. What's happened to you that's good? What's happened to you that's bad? For example, if you were Jaska from Finland, who was a male and hopped aboard the Titanic, you obviously did not get to live in the new world and you did not get to the American dream. So you'll have to, um, that one would be a, an interesting one for um, your actual assignment. All right, so we are going to go through, I'm gonna pull the other one up on my phone so I can keep track of it. So your inspection card is here, your living in a new world card is here, and your American dream card is here. It's got the title of your character at the top of each one, and you read what happens to your character. All right, we are gonna go through this part, and you guys don't have to pull up this, because I'll pull this up, and you guys can check out what's happening to your character as we go. Let me pull up my character as well, so I can... So we can see what happens to old Mary. Okay, so this is the immigration experience, okay? We have already figured out who we are, where our homeland is, and why we came to America. So we have already figured this out. What are some challenges each of you might face? So go around, tell me one challenge that you as a person might face coming in here. I'm gonna have a problem because I have a whole bunch of children, all right? And I was just a farmer prior to. Um, Annie, what's something good about you? Or what's something challenging for you? Very good. Um, Soren, something challenging for you? What do you think based on your character? How many kids do you have? One? Are you married? So you're probably a single father, right? Is that hard? It's hard. Yeah, it's hard. All right. Um, let's see. William, what are some of your skills? Farmer. You're a farmer. Okay, you're gonna have a little bit of trouble coming in? Maybe, maybe not. It could go either way. It could go either way. Um, Giovanni, skills. What kind of skills do you have? I'm a woodworker. You're a woodworker, okay? You're going to have some challenges finding some woodwork? Um, yeah. One of my friends lost a friend. Okay, so you're coming over pretty, pretty happy, right? All right, let's keep going. So inspection, this is where you would go to the inspection PDF, all right? So it looks like that, because you can totally see this from my phone, all right? Uh, and you just search through for your name. I'm trying to find me, there I am. All right, so Mary O'Sullivan, inspection card. I arrived at Castle Garden. I have one week of clothing and a picture of my family farm. I have $12 in my pockets. The inspectors check my luggage and I get to come straight into America. All right. So what did I bring with me? I brought my $12. I brought my one week of clothing and I brought a picture. How do these items help me? How could $12 help me? I can pawn things. I do have some money coming in with me. All right. What are some things that I have to buy once I get into the new world? Food, what else? Food, I, I am gonna have to buy more clothes at some point probably. Did you say transportation? I'm gonna have to figure out transportation. That's the big one, a place to live, right? So I am gonna have to figure that out. What? Oh, you gotta talk louder. Okay, but there's no air mattresses yet. Yeah. Okay, so you can live in what is called a tenement house. A tenement house is, um, like think of the crappiest apartments that you've ever seen or you've ever been in or like that really 
like sketch hotel that you stayed in that one time. That's what a tenement house is. Only instead of only you and your family chilling out in there, you had you, um, your extended family, and somebody else's extended family. You could have up to eight to 12 people living in one room. No, not quite a car, no. But. This is 1840 to round about 19, really it's to the 1920s. Do we have air mattresses? Yeah. What hell? How much are air mattresses? Because I have a feeling that they're going to be like. Yeah, I feel like I'm not going to be on an air mattress as Mary, the doctor, might be. Sorry. That's you. Wait, you're not a doctor? Wait, who's it? You're the doctor. David, the doctor. <laughs> Okay, you're the one that has all the kids too, aren't you, David? Okay. Ah, I'm sorry, sorry. Okay, so, um, Adam, what did you bring with you? All right. Is that it? All right. Uh, Isabella, what did you bring with you? You did that all right. Do you have any money with you? All right. What you got with you? All right. You're going to hang on to that gold piece, aren't you? Oh, you're the first person? That's right. You are. You're Annie. You have seeds? All right. Hang on to that. What do you guys have? Isabella, tell us. I have four weeks of clothing, your best set of china, and ruby earrings from your great grandmother, and $45 in your pocket. Okay, um, yeah, Isabella is going to be doing all right. Giovanni, we talked to you already, didn't we? William, what did you bring with you? Well, we clothing, tablecloth, for my I wonder why you brought a tablecloth. That's going to be interesting. It's, oh, yeah, okay, like, <laughs> like a hobo bag. Um, is that everybody? Um, I brought out clothing, barbering tools, and have sixteen dollars. Very okay, and you've already got your tools of your trade, right? Awesome. All right, think about those. How are those going to help you, right? The tablecloth is going to be interesting. I'm really interested to see what happens with that because that's strange, All right? Um, what are we going to need to buy, and how much money do we have? So if you are Isabella, you're set. All right, she's gonna be fine. If you are, who else had $11? Was it you? If you were like me or Adam and you only have 10 or $11, then it might be a little tight, right? All right. The question of, did you enter Castle Garden, Ellis Island, or the barge is something that you're going to have to look up yourself. All right, what are the differences between those three in, uh, well, you know, actually, I think the next one, the next inspection card down. No, the next one is living in the new world. Yeah, so this is the part you have to figure out yourself. Yes, this is the part you have to go through. So you're gonna have to figure out what's the experience like at Ellis Island? What's the experience like at Castle Garden or the barge? I don't think anybody picked the barge though. So I think it's just Ellis or that one. Yeah. Yeah, so you're doing all right. <laughs> so you're doing all right for yourself then. All right, here we go. Living in a new world. So that is the next card. Go down to that one. All right, so living in a new world. What is your occupation? How much money are you earning per month? And what are your working conditions? 
I'm Mary. I, I leave Castle Garden to find myself walking through the streets of New York City. I overhear Irish music, music being played in the distance and follow the sound to find a family living in a tenement house on Eagle Street. The landlord agrees to let me rent a small apartment if I clean the building for him. My rent is reduced from $4 a month to $3 a month. While living in a tenement house, my husband contracts tuberculosis. Is that going to be good or bad for me? Bad. Yeah, okay, why? Uh, you do need medicine if it's tuberculosis. What's most likely to happen? Yeah. All right. I rush into the dispensary, which is the doctor, where they keep him in isolation as he coughs up blood and runs a low fever. I am left with five children and no income. How are things looking for me? Tough, right? All right, so my occupation, I'm cleaning a building. Um, how much money do I earn per month? I get a cut off on my rent. What are my working conditions? At the moment, not that great, right? I think the next one down has something to do. Where am I living? A tenement house. What does it cost? $3 a month. I have $12 in my pocket. So I'm going to have to find a way to make some money. All right. How much money will I have left to purchase clothing and food? After I take off that 12, I'm still going to have $9, but I also need that money for later on, for rent later on. And what are my new experiences in my home? I'm not having a great time. Not yet. My husband's probably going to die. Poor, poor Mr. O'Sullivan. All right. So tell me, you guys, what is happening to you guys? Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. I, 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 Oh, I think they did it. Very cool. And then I heard you that they were on stand, and then I heard you that they were on stand, and then I heard you that they were on stand, and then I heard you that they were on no, that's okay. That's fine. That's fine. So, um, what is your occupation now? Yeah. Okay. What is your income now? All right. Um, what are you, where, where are you going to live? Mm -mm, so you're, you might be in a little bit of trouble, right? Yeah. All right. So what, what is your character's name again? You, oh yeah. Okay. You're the, you're the Swede, right? Okay. All right. So me and I know we're in a bit of a we're in a bit of a sticky situation. What else is happening with everybody? My first home in America, um, the fifth floor in the tenant house in Jewel Street in New York. Um, I'm a woman that's small and I'm laying down. So I'm glad that I found someone. Yeah. Um, this afternoon I took my daughter out to a test of grass. Um, she felt a little of my barking. I laugh at people for long time for my faith. And the man approaches and then he asks if I can come to her. And when she was searching for a job, she wants to be more professional. I agree with her. Very cool. So, how's your occupation working out for you so far? Good. Yeah, you're doing all right. You found a place to live, right? Um, how much money are you earning per month? You don't really know quite yet. But your working conditions are looking all right for the moment. You have how many kids? Just the one? One daughter. One daughter. All right. Um, Isabella, how are you doing? I'm really curious. Um, I loaded my laundry and cooked in the house and molded um, the pipe in the kitchen broke. Oh, no. Um, and my husband said he did it. And then I think the landlord comes to make me pay $5 rent. Um, and then me and my husband go throughout the entire building, fixing everything and cleaning. But then the landlord becomes irritable, and just so we pay the full price, but despite all our hours of hard work, we decide to leave New York City. Okay, so you are you're kicking out. You're kicking rocks. I want to find you really fast. 
Okay, so you guys had pretty decent working conditions. You had a pretty decent setup, but then your landlord started being a jerk. You were like, out, right? All right, so you guys now have only what you brought with you, correct? All right, Giovanni, what's going on with you? So, Gio Giovanni is doing just fine. Giovanni is about to get married, got a bedroom, got a job, pretty decent working conditions. What's the only problem that you're facing right now, Giovanni? Mm -hmm. All right. Um, William, how are you doing? Now, right? Awesome. Okay. David, how are you doing? Uh, me and my wife, my seven children, find a small apartment on the kitchen for over 10 minutes now. The apartment has one bedroom, a small kitchen, and a sink. I'm sharing a bathroom with, with six other families. And that long for my youngest son, Timothy, developed. Uh, the Kids. Poor kids have to work. All seven of them. <laughs> That's why you have kids. They got to get to work. Um, Annie, what's going on with you? And then the figure in class and telling you marry your husband 
a German banker named Joseph Schaeder. Joseph is employed at Eaton Bridge Market in Manhattan. I make a home and a small apartment on Bergen Hill Street in New York City. It's not long in Florida when my first time was Very cool. How old are you? Uh, so I was 15 when I well, was 16 when I got there, so 19. Yeah, very good. All right, Adam, what's going on? So you have a family, you're 19. That's crazy, right? Tell us, Adam. Um, I got an apartment. It's about four dollars per month. And I make friends with the neighbors and gain a reputation as a good saver. And I run a saving shop and I make 200 a year. It's not bad. That's not bad. How much is 200 a year? Like, how much do you make per month? Do what now? If he owns his shop, be because he owns it, so he has to um, he has to pay everything else. You make about sixteen dollars a month. So like it, at the moment, until he gets a bigger shop, then he makes less because he has to run the shop himself. You know, so he's got to have employees and all of that. Yeah. All right. So then you go down to, and we only have a few. Well. Let's say 11:40 is when we get out of this block. On the yeah. Okay. Oh, 11:46. Oh, okay. We got a little bit of time. Then. Yeah. So this right here is going to be important for your project. This is how much things cost for you. All right. If you have a family of I have seven people in my family. He had, you have seven kids and you and your wife. So you have nine people in your family. All right. Y'all going to be spending some money on some food. All right. Um, you guys are probably okay on food at first. And then we don't know what's going to happen to you just yet. All right. When you get to your actual project and I'll explain where this is relevant in, in just a few seconds. Um, you're going to have to come back and are you going to have like the luxury to get cocoa powder so you can have, you know, like baked goods or so that you can have some hot chocolate or anything like that? Are you going to have a luxury to get cinnamon, which is a cool spice? Or are you going to be stuck on milk, flour, and eggs? Even butter is super, super expensive. But what's not expensive? Potatoes. Potatoes pretty filling, right? So. Who gets to live a whole lot of their time on potatoes? That's going to be a really good question to ask. I'm Irish too, so I'm probably going to be fine with potatoes. Beef roast isn't that bad either, though. It's only 15 cents. If you live in the new world, you probably need some new clothes, especially if you want to impress somebody, like you want to get your, um, you want to get a job as a doctor, or you want to be, if you're a tailor, you're going to have to dress nice, all right? So if you need a suit and shoes and you're a man, it's going to be $6.50 for a suit and $3.50 for shoes. This is very different because men's shoes are more expensive than women's shoes. If you want to dress as a woman, it's $6.50, shoes are $2.50. And then this is important. You have to clothe your children. I'm sorry, but your children definitely come first. Soren, you're okay. You only have one child. So you're, you, and, you and your daughter are doing all right over there. You'll get her close. Very kind of you. <laughs> no shoes. It's a new shoes. All right. Um, living in the new world. This is stuff that you can use in your tenement house. One thing that you are going to have to have is an ice box. You cannot live without an ice box. Why do you need an ice box? To keep your stuff cold, right? So, like, if you buy that beef roast or you buy that milk, you have to keep it from spoiling. Um, you're probably going to want a stove too, and if you have a stove, you have to get loads of coal. Why would you want to spend $22 on a sewing machine? To make your own clothes, what else? To fix your clothes, that's a big one. And there's one more thing that you could do. Yes, to fix other people's clothes and to make clothes for other people. So that could be like your little side job. Also, you don't have to pay somebody else to um, take care of your clothes. All right, we've talked through all of that. What is life like for your children? Definitely take that into account, people with children. You technically are a child until you have your own child, which, I mean, technically, I guess you're still technically a child. 
you're 19, you're, you're an old child. You're, you're a very, very, very old child at 19 and then you have yours. All right, the American dream. So this is your last thing that you check out, all right? So me, Mary O'Sullivan. All right, after three weeks of suffering, uh, my husband has taken a turn for the worse. He passes away, leaving me and my children alone in a new land, so I am now a widower, or Mr. O'Sullivan. I am forced to find a job in a garment factory where I make $250 each year, so about $17 a month. My two oldest sons find jobs in a factory that makes glass. They work each night running molten glass from one building to another before it cools and hardens. I'm sick with worry for their safety. The other children stay at home until they are old enough to work. I spend six years working at the garment factory, and I work long days and nights and my hands are crippled. My el elder son hears of a job as a logger in Tennessee. He views this as an opportunity to leave the turmoil of New York and start a new life again. He accepts the job and my family follows him. He brings home $475 each year to support me and his younger siblings. I take a job selling produce at a farmer's market and I earn $12 a week. So by the end of it, I'm doing all right. Now we spend a little bit of time having some issues, but things kind of settle out. So I start off really, really badly, right? My husband dies, uh, my two oldest sons are working a dangerous job. I'm working day and night and I, my hands are crippled, but then luck changes for us and we do all right. How would your life be different if I had been born in America? This is something I want to talk about as a whole, okay? How might your lives, as your whatever immigrants you have chosen, how might your life be different if you lived in America to start with? How might your life be different if you lived in America? Based on, you would have a farm probably, right? Um, David, how much your life be different? How much, how much David, how much David's life has been different if he had been born in America? If I was born in America, mm -hmm. I mean, I don't think they really changed because he ended up pretty good. Well, more than good, like he earned a lot of money. So you think he would be probably about the same either way? Very cool. Uh, Annie, would your life be any different? What does your what does your epithet say? So, uh, do you want me to read the whole thing? Yes, yeah, please okay, do. So, now I'm interested. I was with the first, my first child and decided to spend the day at home to be a full time mother. William lives just 20 short months until he loses his battle with a long alignment that makes it difficult for him to breathe. I bury my firstborn in a small cemetery in New York. In total, I have 10 children. Catherine, Joseph Jr., Theodore, Julia, and Henry survived through adulthood, unfortunately. Winthrop, Walter, Edward, and Marianne are playing by the week with poverty, including with urea, malnutrition, and infection. At the age of 47, my life ends at my home on Cherry Street due to a heart failure. My gravestone features Irish shamrock, a salted cross, cherry blossoms, and a small part of the gold coin like gold. Things started out okay for you there, Annie. Yeah, yeah. diphtheria is what um, diphtheria is what got King Henry V. It's um, where you have like a you drink dirty water, and you have a parasite, and you basically um, you diarrhea yourself to death. One time, because um, I used to work in construction. Yeah, he was like he was drinking dirty water. And they could have gardened it, and I was sick for like three weeks. I had to go to the hospital. It's just food poisoning. Um, it's really bad because that house is sitting at the 17 years. Yeah, you. Yeah, the water. 
Well, I was like dehydrated. I was like, bro, I gotta drink something. <laughs> like, I mean, drinking out of the water hose, that's fine, but drinking out of the water hose at the 17 year old house. Eh. But yeah, no, like you lose all, you lose, you dehydrate very, very quickly, and then you die because you can't keep anything down. I'm glad. I'm glad that you've made it. That you made it through your no, your near death experience. Okay, um, so <laughs> we took such a tangent. Um, so go through these. Uh, don't worry about this reflection part, okay? Um, you can go through these questions and think about them. They are going to help you for that, but you don't have to answer those questions, all right? What you are doing for the assignment with this, and I'm going to say this very, very quickly because it's, it's almost time uh, for the bell to ring. It's Thursday. It's called a social media project, okay? So you have... At some point, it'll pop up. Mm -hmm. We're good. Okay, so you're creating a social media profile for your immigrant character from this assignment, all right? So you're creating a Facebook, basically. You are going to create a Facebook page for your, um, for you. So Soren, David, uh, Einer, is that what I said? All right, you use this right here, which is called it's, it takes you to the site called Fake Book, and hopefully that'll load up while um, we're going through this. Uh, this is a very, very finicky site, um, but when it works, it's fantastic. I have a video that I did for my 10th graders on how everything works on it, I'll post that up for you guys. Uh, just realize that when I'm talking about the ancient American civilizations, that's not what this is assignment on for you guys. All right. Um, okay. Yeah. So you can just you click on start now. No, you don't click on start now. You just click over. Don't don't click on any of the add-ons. Okay. Um, so you put a name here. So I'm gonna put Mary O. Sullivan, and it is going to randomly. Most, it, well, after I start adding pictures, it will randomly generate a photo for you. Uh, it will. You can also choose a background image, and then you will add posts. So you will say, like, Mary. It can be from earlier today. I'll. You could put the date down if you wanted to, like 1912 or something like that. And then you could say, um, yeah. <laughs> You would hit post, and there it is. All right. <laughs> Look, I have a very um, odd, dark sense of humor, so no, you're not gonna. You're okay. Yeah, don't be uh, don't be inappropriate when you post stuff and anything like that. Like you know, keep it school appropriate. But um, you can you can make um, funny comments. Um, I'm gonna put um, Jack from the Titanic because he commented before um, all of this. Submit comments. After you do three posts, you can. And this is a reminder that we will eat lunch during our third block class. When the bell, the first bell rings in a few moments, that will be for even numbers classrooms to dismiss. Odd numbered classrooms will dis dismiss one minute later. We will serve lunch to you in the classrooms, and we have teachers that will help you with that. So you are to report to your third block class, and then the teacher will give you directions from there. Thank you. So you hit save after you have done so many. Put in a password. I always use one, two, three, four. So now I have saved it. Now I can add information about where I was born. I can add family. I can edit. And I can go through and add photos. All I have to do is click on edit. 
and then click the camera and it should allow me to do those. But I'll have to save the template first. No, let me tell you, you've got to go up and there. Thank you, Mr. Will Hoyt. All right, anything, nope, any questions that you guys have about this, let me know. You do have to do your family info in the description. So that's your character card. Uh, you're doing one post about why you're leaving, two about your trip, one on your arrival, two posts about your experiences during processing at either Ellis Island or whatever port you come through, three posts about living in the new world, three about your American dream, and your total is 10 relevant posts. No, you have 10 relevant hashtags with your posts and five pictures. All right, so put some hashtags on there. You can do more posts, you can do more pictures, you can do more hashtags. You can't do less, all right? And then it is worth 100 points. Each post is, I think there's 15, maybe. I can't remember how many posts there are exactly. I think there's three, six, seven, eight, one, two, 12. Yes, yeah, so there's 12 posts and then um, the family info. All right, make sense? Sound good? Any questions, shoot me a message through Squalogy. Um, that's it. That's all of it. Oh, yeah. Come here. All right. Bye, online people. Hey, remember, don't walk out the door until the second bell.